three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of the Delta II with Grail. Journey to the center of the moon. Grail consisted of two probes called Ebb and Flow. Linked together in a single flight path, they studied the gravitational field of the moon, generating maps like this crustal thickness atlas. It reveals much about the interior of the moon and even has some surprises. Two years ago, we reported evidence that the moon is shrinking. Now we found evidence that the moon is actually being pulled apart, forming features called grobin. So the shrinking moon, it turns out, is not shrinking everywhere. Some places, the moon is actually expanding by a little bit. So finding these young grobin was a real surprise because we thought, well, all these lobate scarps are telling us the moon is shrinking. So what are these little, small grobin that are telling us the moon is pulling apart doing in, in this picture? How does this all fit together? All that's related to how the moon has evolved, how the moon has lost heat over its four and a half billion year history. Most of the terrestrial planets, when they formed, were very hot, and they got so hot that they actually completely melted. When that happens, they will be in a general state of contraction because they're still hot on the inside and cooling down, and as they cool, they want to shrink. Only the outer part of the moon melted, forming what is called a magma ocean. And in that model, the balance of stresses or forces that are acting on the moon would allow us to form both these small lobate scarps that show contraction, as well as these small grobin that show the moon being pulled apart. One of the really, really exciting returns of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter mission is that we've seen this now growing evidence of very young geologic activity on the moon. The moon's crust is much thinner on the near side, 68 kilometers thick on average, and varies from less than a kilometer under Mare Crisium to 107 kilometers thick, just north of the crater Korolev on the lunar far side. The moon's mantle is only partially molten, and the moon's center of mass is offset by about two kilometers in the direction toward the Earth. This and other data quickly changed our understanding of the moon. To gather more evidence on the unusual electrical properties on the lunar surface and how it affects lunar dust, NASA sent LADI, the Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, to investigate. At higher altitudes, we saw very few dust particle impacts, but the lower we went with LADI, the more we saw, and it's a very, very steep rise. So if you're operating with spacecraft very close to the surface of, of the moon, as you would with a robotic lander or a human lander, uh, you might need to consider the fact that you've got more dust there in the way as you come in. This probe flew progressively lower and finally impacted on the surface. Ignition, throttle up, main stage. This is Morpheus, a robotic self-guided lander. You tell it where to land and it will do the rest independently seeking the safest course and avoiding any rocky dangers. The ESA were also developing an autonomous lander to perform the same function. The lunar lander is a small but uh, very challenging mission. Uh, the most important part of it is, of course, landing on the south pole of the moon, which requires innovative solution concerning landing, uh, hazard avoidance, uh, navigation, and in fact, this is the mission which uh, will bring about the new generation of navigation and guidance sensor algorithm and software. But a fiscal year is a long time in space. NASA now have little interest in returning men to the moon. They are firmly focused on a Martian landscape. The Europeans have had budget cuts. The ESA lander now shelved for the time being. This leaves the door wide open for Russia and the younger players, China, India and Japan, plus several private companies now developing the same technology to put first robots, then humans, on the moon. All this time, the Chinese National Space Administration, or CNSA, 
had launched two orbiter reconnaissance satellites, Chang'e 1 and 2. Then Chang'e 3 deposited a lunar rover on the surface. Their latest, Chang'e 5, made a return trip around the moon. They are firmly set on a permanent manned lunar base. I think the reason this has resonated with so many people and all over the world, it's not just our country, is because everyone can look up in the sky and see the moon. And I think people, a lot of people remember the Apollo landings, the first you know, man on the moon, and, and you can also look up at the sky. And I, I believe that people, it's very tangible to them that way. The moon, they can relate, and so they, they want to be a part of it. That, that's my theory on why people have just so connected.